Thing. Order! Oh, order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, it appears that the drugs do work. Scientists say that they have resolved one of the most hotly debated topics in medicine, whether antidepressants are effective in treating depression. A huge study carried out over six years has found that all 21 common antidepressants are more effective than dummy pills. A science editor, Tom Clark, reports. Tens of millions are prescribed in Britain each year. Now, the largest ever study of the many common types of antidepressants finds they definitely work in treating one of our most neglected illnesses, depression. It confirms once and for all that antidepressants as a class of medication that we use to treat clinically significant depression are effective, are well tolerated and are helpful in most patients. Not all patients, but most patients. The study pooled the results of more than 500 clinical trials of antidepressants, some industry-sponsored, others not. And experts not involved with the research say it supports the wider use of the drugs for those with debilitating so-called clinical depression who aren't yet getting any treatment. Of these people, at the moment, only one in five receive an antidepressant. So, yes, we should prescribe more antidepressants, but only to the people who need them. On average, one in four people in the UK experience a mental health problem each year. Yet only one in eight receive some form of treatment for mental health. Use of medication is increasing with nearly 65 million prescriptions of antidepressants in 2016, more than double the decade before. Mental health campaigners say the increase in prescribing reflects a greater awareness of mental illness and less reluctance on behalf of GPs to give the drugs. But antidepressants don't work for some and are not suitable for others. And concerns remain about the access to alternatives, like talking therapies. I think what's important when someone does go and, and talk to their GP about depression is that the GP treats the whole person, looks at the lifestyle factors that might be behind someone presenting to them, uh, and talk about the full range of treatment options, the pros and cons of taking antidepressants versus other treatments, maybe thinking about a combination of treatments as well, which many people find most effective, rather than just necessarily reaching for the prescription pad. The study also revealed that for a minority, no antidepressant is effective. However, most pharmaceutical companies have moved away from developing new drugs, given the overall success of existing ones. Researchers argue there's a real need for studies into newer, more effective drugs for depression. Tom Clark reporting. Well, joining me now in the studio is journalist Kate Lever, who has written extensively about her own long-term use of antidepressants, and Dr. Joanna Moncrief, a psychiatrist who is critical of the overuse of antidepressants. Welcome to you both. Kate, let me start with you. Um, did these pills save your life or at least make it worth living? I'd say several times over the course of my entire lifetime, yes, they have. They've enabled me to experience things like joy and love and enthusiasm um, and definitely kept me around on the planet. And how old were you when you started taking them? Uh, I saw my first psychiatrist when I was about 12 um, and I've been taking antidepressants on and off since then. And without them, you wouldn't be able to survive the way you are at the moment? Uh, without them, which I have tried, uh, yeah, I find it extremely difficult to function. Um, I think depression, and as we know, it's so common, so many people watching this will know my own experience, mm -hmm. um, it completely depletes you. So this exhaustive study is not telling you something that you didn't already know? No, absolutely. I mean, I feel like this is one of those situations where science is confirming something that so many of us already know intimately. Dr Moncrief? What's your reaction to Kate's personal story? Well, the trouble is with depression is it's, it's a condition that comes and goes. It, it, it fluctuates or ups and downs. So it's difficult for any individual to know quite what helps and what doesn't help. That's why we need placebo-controlled trials, like the ones that have been looked at in this new study. The trouble is the new study doesn't address the criticisms that I and many other people have made of these, of these trials in the past. And those criticisms are that the way that these trials have been conducted and the way that analyses of mm -hmm. them are conducted has inflated the differences between antidepressants and placebo. But would you say that Kate is making a mistake by taking these pills, which she says are clearly working for her? 
Well, I think, the, I think the evidence suggests that the difference between an antidepressant and a placebo is very small and probably not clinically relevant. It's probably not detectable. But that's not, not what this detectable. study says. This study says there is a significant difference. The, and the study has looked at response rates, which yeah. is um, a categorization of the depression scales that were actually collected from the participants. Mm. If you look at the difference in the scores on the depression scales between people taking antidepressants and people taking placebo, they're very, very small. But this study involved 522 trials, 115,477 people. That's a lot of people. I mean, there's, there's never been anything quite like it. it. It is a lot of people, and it confirms that the differences between right. antidepressants and placebo are small if, if you look at the scale data. And, and there are also reasons why those differences may not be because the drugs are treating depression. They may right. be to do with the uh, adverse effects or the alterations that antidepressants Kate? cause. I'm just a little taken aback by the suggestion that the individual might not know uh, what works for them because I think, of course, you've got to trust in the doctor and in the NHS and, and now we know in medication. Um, but I think ultimately monitoring your own moods is so important and I have always known what helps me um, and it's antidepressants. Isn't the bigger problem here that this society still stigmatises medication for mood disorders? I mean, it doesn't have, it's not like that everywhere. In the United States, they're much more um, tolerant of this sort of thing. But here, people don't like to admit they're taking pills for depression. Isn't that the real problem? I, I think it's much more stigmatising to tell someone that they've got a brain abnormality, that they're biologically flawed, and that they need a medicine to put that right. And the idea that depression is caused by a chemical imbalance and that the antidepressants work by correcting it has never been supported and is, is not generally supported anymore. Well, let, Kate, what do you think? What is more stigmatising for you? God, I'm so much more comfortable with someone telling me that I have a chemical imbalance in mm. my brain because it's a medical condition and therefore I will treat it with a medicine. Right. I find that fine. I think the moralising and the attribution of moral weight to these little pills that we take is the real problem. Isn't that a problem? I mean, if you're dealing with depression as a as a psychological issue that you have to you know you can treat try to treat with talk therapy let's say it does become an issue of character and not just a medical condition a chemical imbalance in some ways that's much harder to deal with for the individual than something that is just chemical in your brain isn't it but but if you if you tell someone that it's a chemical imbalance you're you're it's a very disempowering message i think to get because you're telling them you can't do anything about it. You need to take this medicine to do something about it. And although, obviously, lots of people do do lots of things about their depression, I do come across people who, having been diagnosed as having depression and taking antidepressants, become very chronic and, and dependent and, and feel that they can't do much about their condition. Kate? I mean, no. I wouldn't call that giving someone a disempowering message. I would call that giving them a clinical diagnosis, mm -hmm. which is appropriate in the circumstance. So, okay. I'm, I'm not... so it's not about empowerment or disempowerment, it's just about no, treating the I, issue. No, and I think, I think treating your own illness, mm. whether that is with antidepressants mm. or otherwise, okay. and it may not be correct for everyone, okay. is empowering. Got to leave it there. Mm. Um, Kate, uh, Dr. Joanna Moncrief, Kate uh, Lever, thank you very much indeed to both of you for coming in. Thank you so much.